Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today we're going to be looking at a standard developer that we've all known about and certainly most of us have used at one point or another, and that's D76. It is the standard by which all other developers are compared. We're going to look at the original D76 formula and we're going to develop with it. But this is the beginning of a new series and we're going to then, in later episodes, examine different companies' versions of D76 and how they improved upon that standard formula. And we're going to culminate that with Jeffrey Crawley's versions of D76, which were outstanding. So here we go. Let's start with making standard D76. So I'm going to be making the standard version of D76 here, the one from the 1920s. And this is the one which is the basis of all other D76 variants. We have two developing agents in the original formula. We have metal and we have hydroquinone. We have a preservative and also a chemical that helps reduce grain and that's sodium sulfite. And we have borax, which is an alkaline accelerator for the developer. Now, there, those who have made D76 know that there are many variants uh, of this chemistry for different reasons and we're going to discuss those in future videos. But with this one I really wanted to start with the bog standard D76. So we all know how to make that and then we can compare all our developers to this one. So here I have 350 milliliters of hot water and I'm going to make 500 mils today of this developer. So I'm making about half of what you'd normally make. So note that uh, when you're watching this video, if you're going to make the half liter or a full liter, I'll give you the measurements for both. Now, the first thing we're going to add to our water is a pinch of the sodium sulfite. And I've spoken about this before in videos. That's because we need to get rid of any oxygen that's it dissolved in this water. So just a tiniest little amount of sodium sulfite goes into the water and I'll dissolve that in. That grabs hold of those dissolved oxygen molecules and stops them reacting with the metal, which is the next thing we're going to add. So that's it all dissolved in. It dissolves very quickly. Now here's our metal. Now normally it's two grams for a litre of D76. I've got one gram here because I'm making half a litre. Pop that in. Now remember when you're making chemistry like this, there is dangers in all chemicals if you breathe them in or get them on your skin. I have the door wide open behind me so I've got loads of air moving around in here so that I'm not going to be breathing in any of this dust. There's the meat all, all dissolved already. Yep, it's all gone in. Excellent. So the next thing I add for my D76 is the rest of the sodium sulfite. I have 50 grams of sodium sulfite here for a 500 milliliter mix of D76. If you're going to make one liter, use 100 grams of the sodium sulfite. Let's dissolve all that in. Each chemical should be fully dissolved before you add the next. Those who actually make D76 from packaged versions that they buy from Kodak, for instance, know how difficult it is to dissolve that chemistry. And that's because it's all been put together. So making it yourself does help. You can dissolve the chemicals separately and fully before adding the next. Going nicely into solution, clearing up. And after you've added your sodium sulfite, you'll notice the water seems thicker. It's an interesting feeling the water has now. 
So the next thing I need to add after that's fully dissolved is the hydroquinone. Now for a one liter version of D76, I would add five grams. I've got two and a half grams here to add. So pop that in carefully. The hydroquinone is the worst of these four chemicals health-wise, so be careful with hydroquinone. And that's dissolving in nicely. There's a slight pink tinge to my D76 now. It's very slight. You probably can't see it on the camera, it's so slight. Just looking carefully, it's nearly all into solution. And finally, we need to add our borox. And our borox is two grams per liter of D76. I'm adding one gram for my 500 milliliters. There. And this, of course, is the alkaline accelerator. There we are. And it's because of this alkaline accelerator that D76 is a better developer, for instance, for pushing film or over developing film to increase the higher zones because it's got this more alkalinity and therefore it helps it to keep increasing contrast as you continue with development. And the reason I say that is because D23, which we've covered in earlier videos, is also a very good developer and based on D76, but isn't so good at pushing film because it doesn't increase in contrast like D76 does. I should cover that in another video. But that's it all dissolved. Now all I have to do now is to top this up to 500 milliliters and I've got my half liter of the original D76. Next, I'm going to develop a film with it. So here is the negative scan. I shot HP5 at ISO 400 and I developed it in the D76 for seven and a half minutes. I agitated every 30 seconds. So we can see it's quite sharp and there's a lovely contrast to this negative. Um, HP5 is a contrasty film as it is and the D76 just brings that contrast out quite nicely. Um, let's have a look a little closer. So here is the little guy that I was photographing on the flower. Um, very sharp, very sharp. Um, but look at the grain. It's quite obvious. It's not unpleasant, the grain. It's, it's quite nice. You can see quite a lot here in the shadows. But there is a lot of grain. There's no doubt about it. This is a 35 millimeter negative and I expected there to be grain. That's why I used the HP5. I wanted you to see what D76 did with grain. Uh, but it's not unpleasant. I'm zoomed in at 100% now. So if I zoom back out again, you'll see that looked at a regular distance, this negative is very nice indeed. There's a lovely contrast in this flower. This is a dahlia that I've been growing in my garden. The problem is with this D76 formula, if I came back to develop negatives like this in a couple of months time, the contrast would have changed. And this was the problem with D76. The formula was not stable and over a period of time became more and more alkaline, which increased the activity of the developer and meant that your contrast increased in your negatives. And of course, you didn't know exactly how much that contrast increase was going to be. Now, I just want to say that if you buy D76 now or ID11 from Kodak or Ilford, 
it's not going to change in contrast over time. They have fixed that problem. But many other companies saw what was wrong with D76 and they reformulated it and made better D76s. And those are the things we're going to look at in the next few episodes of this mini series. So here's the print and it's a D76 print. It's nice. There's nothing wrong with a D76 print. They always look nice. This is an 11 by 14 enlargement of a 12 by 16 enlargement on the baseboard. So basically I blew up the 35 millimeter negative to 12 by 16 and placed this 11 by 14 piece of paper on the baseboard to capture this area. It's very nice. The grain structure is pleasant. It's actually almost invisible from this viewing distance, which I think is about what I would use if I had this up on the wall, for instance. There's no grain. And I like the contrast. The contrast is good. The blacks are good. The little guy is sharp. Um, there's some micro contrast. You can just about see veins in, in the wings of the insect. So it's pretty good. Um, nice contrast here behind the flower. So it's a really nice print. It's a D76. Not a lot wrong with that developer. So there's D76. It's a really good developer. Many people use it all the time. It does have those problems though, of where after a while it begins to change in activity. Now, later formulas adjusted the chemistry to stop that happening. Next week, we're going to start looking at different formulas that did stop that happening and improved actually upon that original developer. So I hope you join me then. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next week.